couple of days ago, it was breaking news actually in my little sector of the um, internet that Oval Space, a club here in London, which is in East London, a pretty decent club in terms of the guests that they're able to get in, and they have like an adjacent um space as well called pickle factory where they do all sorts of events um oval space is those weird ones in london where if i'm not mistaken it's like more than 500 people capacity it might be 750 or something but the shape of it is like it's just it's just a gargantuan shape it's like under a uh one of those kind of triangle type hot shapes but it's really wide um and every time i've gone there no matter who how big the dj is it always feels empty because it's just so much room to fill so it's a really difficult space to make work as a nightclub right and of course the other thing on top of that for whatever reason i don't know who handles the bookings they all hand who manages the space it's really expensive drinks wise it kind of feels like a central london club but it's based in east london it's really odd like i remember once going there and like giving a bartender 10 pounds for like a whiskey and coke and not getting any change back i was like yikes like okay cool i'm definitely in um you know i'm definitely in an expensive nightclub so it was kind of hard to get used to all that sort of stuff but the one thing i do like about it it's got an amazing kind of outdoor smoking area bit that kind of overlooks if i'm not mistaken these massive um oil drums i think they're what they're called it's just the views are really nice at night you can just go out there if you know even if you're not smoking just to hang out and do your chat because that's one of my favorite spots to kind of hang out at nightclubs anyway after you've kind of danced your face off to kind of go outside and just you know get chatting to randoms and other fellow fans of the pa people that you're there to see and um there was some obviously heartbreaking news that Ovio had lost their license right and at the time when it was happened i remember saying oh this is annoying why is it every time there's an issue at a nightclub um there's the first kind of port of action is always to close there's never like consultation there's never like okay how are we going to make this right how are we going to make this work what lessons can we take from this to not make it happen again the kind of first response always when something pops off in a nightclub whether it's somebody unfortunately passing away somebody injuring himself a fight weapons is always straight away to go to the cans to go to the basically like closing the doors of the place and basically saying hey no license which basically means you know it's redundant as a nightclub or you know really strict in terms of how they approve their license either way it kind of kills any momentum they have and news like this also doesn't help and me talking about it doesn't help because it spreads um it spreads that kind of not so say misinformation it just spreads um uncertainty out there in a the clubbing space and that kind of you know seep through people start spreading rumors oh it's gone it's gone it's gone and it's kind of over before it's even started but this extra new bit of news that happened recently has maybe shed some light on it and maybe has offered a kind of different perspective on why they ended up closing so this is courtesy of ra and it says oval spaces license was revoked due to poor management and escalating violence as tower hamlets cancel it's a time council revoked to venues over space license on the grounds of poor manager escalating violence. The decision was delivered at a licensing subcommittee meeting on Tuesday, 27th of September. Oval Space's license was under review for the, what's that? Second time in just over a year after an alleged shooting at the venue in the early hours of August 30th, last review followed, uh, followed a stabbing in February 2020. Now, the reason why I think this is really important is that for someone like myself who's been to this nightclub a lot and who's also been, you know, search quite roughly and thoroughly by the security guards there who are really on job right it feels like that's number one of those nightclubs where it feels like the security guards are always on top of you and it, it also might explain why everybody went to e1 actually it might explain why a lot of promoters because i always wondered why would they go to e1 and not go to you know oval space or pick a factory but to be fair the bouncers and the security people at e1 even though the crowd can be a bit random they do kind of leave you to your own devices they don't really bother you as soon as you get past the, the you know the entry doors and stuff they kind of leave you alone even the entry doors they're pretty safe but i always felt like an oval it kind of reminded me um of like how fabric used to be right when people didn't like to go to fabric because you'd go through these metal detectors and there'd be dogs there and shit it was just super aggressive it was like, it was like, it was like the supreme vibe killer and i feel like oval space did the same sort of thing so it's pretty funny to me that they'd go to all that extent to really aggressively search people like myself and try to you know confiscate you know a little bit of ket or something or an md or some coke or some pills or whatnot because they don't want you to you know how dare you go in there and try and have a good time but then people are able to what smuggle in weapons like an actual handgun or you know or you've got people in that place that you're letting in who attract people who have handguns people are bringing in knives and stuff people are fighting like come on man you're you're worried about us with a couple of grounds but really you should be worried about these people because they're the ones that end up you know getting your license revoked and essentially it's cost everyone a job 
that's associated with the club, let alone the DJs and the artists that play there. Everyone that's you know involved in the actual running of that place is going to suffer off the back of this. It continues. Earlier today, the council published a document explaining this week's, this week's decision. According to P.C. Mark Perry, the manager of the venue, hasn't improved since the last review. He pointed out the factors such as the sale of alcohol to intoxicated ravers, failure to install the ID scanner system called Club Scan, and hiring inadequate door security. See, I told you, which led to a firearm entering the premise in August. So they were given ample warning. They were. This is actually goes against what I say in terms of our. They I feel like they whenever there's a incident in the club, they always close it. It looks like there was some level of consultation or there was like a, you know, a kind of final kind of third warning. Hey, if you don't improve this, you're out. And they didn't want to improve it. And obviously then the license got revoked. And I like they did this because I guess they knew that maybe the club owners were going to bank on the sympathy of, you know, ravers like myself and people like myself who kind of always cry gentrification and this is not fair because, you know, we don't have the information. So they wanted to put the information out there and say, hey, no, actually, there's more to the story that you don't know. Like these guys, you know, were taking a piss. They weren't really doing their jobs correctly. So we had to make sure that people were safe in the long term. It continues. PC Perry also said Oval Space appeared to be controlled by gangs. <laughs> <laughs> a separate operation tried to officer said the suspects were local gang members who may have a mutual agreement with the security firm to keep relative peace oh my god they had fucking cartel members in oval space um breaking up fights and shit pc perry pointed to past alleged violent instances at the venue including two fights in 2022 and a stabbing in 2020 Paddy Wuha, solicitor for Oval Space license holder Dean James, rejected the claim that the venue had been taken over by gangs. In a statement to resident advisor, Oval Space also rejected the claim. He said, Here, we could be disappointed by this week's decision by Tyler Hammett, who emphasized that a difficult decision is to make. It's incidents. This incident isn't a reflection of many it's safe and inclusive events of the venues, uh, events the venue host for London, sorry, each month and has done for many years. We completely dispute any claims that the venue is gang affiliated. <laughs> we acknowledge that security errors are made in relation to it. Oh, really? You acknowledge it? Okay, good to know. We take responsibility for and we'll be working closely with the relevant authorities to address this issue. They might also just close the whole thing that is rotten to the core, mate. Um, think about it, man. Like, kink parties that should scare... Because the kink scene thing, the Save Our Spaces, was probably a harder thing to protest against and win because automatically, you know, from just a naked eye looking at that, pe looking at those people who are from that scene, it's a bit scary for a normie to kind of get. They're all in latex. They're wearing flipping spandex, you know, well latex leather. They're tight, mesh. This. Some of them are half naked. You know, some of them, you know, are submissive. They've got dog uniforms on. The furries, whatever it is. I can understand why I'd normally be a bit freaked out by it. But if Tower Hammers were able to understand the plight of the kink community and you know the need to have you know safe spaces for them to be able to operate and do their thing then these guys have no excuse to be able to kind of not get their license revoked all you have to do is make sure fucking you know the Sinaloa cartel didn't come down and start operating inside your club it's not that difficult to do and the fact that they didn't flip in fix that is just mostly their error in it James apologized to the subcommittee. He said the venue had resolved its problems since the last review and had been receiving positive feedback from the police. <laughs> Unless it's authority. He said it was important to keep the venue open to continue supporting local jobs in the community. Mate, that's too late. You fucked them over by not addressing it properly and actually making the relevant changes. And now look, you cost a lot of people their jobs. Your reputation is in absolute tatters. And people like myself are not on your side. And I should be on your side, do you know what I mean? Ultimately, the subcommittee disagreed. They felt the issues were very well taking place despite the best efforts of license holders and staff. They have arisen because of the failures of, of their part. The subcommittee is ultimately concerned with the safety of the wider public, exactly. And we satisfied that the only appropriate and, and proportional action is to revoke the premises license. So effectively, it just turns it into what? A glorified um, we work basically, right? Without the desk and tables and shit. That's what basically it's going to be. Or it's going to be one of those places where um what you call it people do like they film um, commercials and stuff and adverts that's it nothing else is gonna go on in there it's done it's a wrap it's over it was based on appeal decision we would like to thank everyone for the continued support this person said since launching in 2012 over space has been one of london's most popular venues hosting club nights hosting live events and telex conferences among many other events in 2015 the team opened a sister club pickle factory which sits opposite it's quite telling though from my experience again i don't know if it's just a promoter thing 
because it's good to kind of test other venues and see what works for you but it's pretty telling in the last few years there's been a lot of big promoters in london have basically decided to do parties and elsewhere they were maybe started in places like oval space and slowly but surely they went to other venues just because you know they couldn't handle that anymore so maybe it's quite telling that you know maybe the security there were just not doing their job correctly and promoters were just not really to take that sort of risk by having all these ragamuffins at their club and basically ruining their reputation as well with that sort of stuff so maybe that that's kind of a buy on it but you know i think they only have themselves to blame to be honest i don't think they have anyone else to blame on this issue but themselves no one else to blame 